All right, we're going to continue this solving by taking square roots here. These are just some examples uh, of what you'll be expected to do. Uh, we follow the exact same steps, right? Uh, the steps are get something squared by itself, right? Then take the square root, then break it up if necessary. So uh, here we go. We'll start with number one. Uh, we need to get something squared by itself. So I see that the n squared has a plus 4 over there. So I need to get rid of that 4. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. Because that subtract 4 gets rid of the plus 4. And on the left-hand side, I'm left with n squared. And on the right-hand side, I have 404 minus 4. That's 400. I have something squared by itself equals a number. I'm going to take the square root of both sides because this square root cancels the squared. I'm going to be left with n equals whatever the square root of 400 is. So I come to my calculator, put in square root of 400, and I get 20. Remembering that I have both positive and negative 20. So there's the answer to number one. Number two, we're going to do the same kind of thing. Uh, what I like to do first is I like to make sure that I have my squares on the left-hand side. Uh, you don't have to. So uh, you can leave it just like this. But I'm going to rewrite this equation so that I have 3n squared is equal to 432. Because I like my equations to all look the same. And I like my variable on the left-hand side. So I just flip sides. And you could totally do that. Now I have that 3 stuck over there with the n. It's stuck with multiplication. I need to unstick multiplication with division. The 3's on the left cancel, and I'm left with n squared is equal to whatever 432 divided by 3 is. So I go to my calculator. 432 divided by 3 is 144. So n squared is equal to 144. Now I have to take the square root of both sides because this square root cancels the squared. And I'm left with n is equal to square root of 144. So I just hit square root of 144. And I get 12, remembering that it's both positive and negative. 12, two solutions. My next equation looks a little bit different. We haven't really done one like this. Uh, so let's pay special attention to this one. This is the one where the break it up if necessary will come in. Okay, so again, I'm going to flip sides. I'm going to have the quantity n plus 1 squared on the left. And on the right, I'm going to have 144. I do have something squared by itself is equal to a number. I can take the square root. Because, again, I'm trying to get rid of this squared. And on the left-hand side, the only thing that's left now is this n plus 1. And on the right-hand side, I have, remember, square root of 144 from the last one. It's both positive and negative 12. Here's where we need to break it up. Because I have two answers here. I have n plus 1 is equal to negative 12. And I also have n plus 1 equal to positive 12. Now I need to solve these two equations. I solve these two equations by getting the n by itself. So I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides, canceling that plus 1. And on the left, I got n by itself. 12, uh, negative 12 minus 1 is negative 13. So there's my first solution. My second solution, I do the same thing, subtract 1, subtract 1. And we have to pay very close attention to the signs here. 12 minus 1 is 11. Finish. So I have two solutions, negative 13 and positive 11. So notice, it's not always plus or minus the same number. Right? We, only, we do the plus or minus after we take the square root. And then we have to break it up if necessary. 
Okay, let's take a look here at number four. This will be the last example. Uh, and then I'll let you guys move on to the practice. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to get something squared by itself. So this something squared over here is this entire thing here, right? That n minus 5. I need to get rid of that subtract 30 first. How do you get rid of subtract 30? Well, we add 30. Because it's stuck with subtraction, we undo subtraction with addition. Then subtract 30 and the plus 30 cancel on the left, leaving me with n minus 5, the quantity, let me write that a little nicer, n minus 5, the quantity squared, is equal to 70 plus 30 is 100. Now I have something squared on the left by itself is equal a number. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides because this square root cancels that squared. And I'm left with n minus 5. n minus 5 on the left is equal to square root of 100. I know we all know it's 10, but don't, rem don't forget it's both positive and negative 10. Now here is where we need to break it up. Because I have n minus 5 is equal to the negative 10, but I also have n minus 5 is equal to positive 10. Now I need to solve both of these. I get rid of that subtract 5 by adding 5 to both sides on my equation on the left. Because this adding 5 cancels that subtract 5. I get the n by itself, and I have negative 10 plus 5. That is negative 5. There's one answer. I do the same thing on the equation on the right. I need to add 5 to both sides. Step at a time. This subtract 5 and plus 5 cancel, leaving me with just an n on the left. 10 plus 5, 15. Two solutions finished. So uh, that's pretty much it for solving with square roots. Uh, that's really as difficult as it gets. Uh, what I want you to, to understand though is that these are pretty easy numbers. Notice that all of my solutions are integer values. It's okay if when I take square roots, I get decimals. It's just both positive and negative, whatever that decimal value is. Now, what I'd like you guys to do is if you scroll down here, I have the cooldown. I would like you to find both solutions to this equation. Uh, show your work, please. That would be great. Uh, the solutions you should get, uh, if I remember correctly, you should get n is equal to negative 5, and you should also get n is equal to positive 9. These should be the two solutions to this equation. Uh, so work those out, and then when you're done with all of that, uh, you have the 7.3 practice is in your OneNote right underneath uh, this page. Thanks, guys.